Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Well, good morning, Calvary. Thanks for tuning in today on this wonderful 4th of July. Uh, I hope that you're enjoying your day. If you have the day off, I hope that you get to celebrate well and enjoy it. If you don't have the day off, it means you have an important job uh, that's probably serving and protecting people. Thank you uh, for what you do. Uh, You know, today we reflect and celebrate the fact that, that our nation was set up with some values that we believe are pretty important. And I want to read a line, uh, maybe one of the most popular lines from uh, what is actually the preamble to the Constitution or preamble to the the Declaration of Independence. And it says this, it says, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and they're endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. And among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We all love and celebrate uh, the truths communicated in that and and also the truths that, that, that those documents would go on to outline and the fact that we're able to be here in the dynamic we are because of that document. You know, Thomas Jefferson didn't have an original thought there. Uh, it wasn't uh, just something that struck him on the 3rd of July as he's cramming for his homework on the 4th. Uh, I'm sure that wasn't the case. Uh, but it wasn't something original to him. In fact, he said they're self-evident. It's obvious that it is this way. And I love the fact that so often the world around us reflects the truth of God. Uh, it reflects the truth of how God created and wired us because it just so happens that today we find ourselves in James chapter 2. And I want to read a few verses here and, and just reflect on, on that idea that we're created equal, uh, all with certain rights and certain expectations because we're all created in the image of God. And in James 2, he addresses a, a sin that is, in his eyes, very concerning. And in James 2, starting verse 1, it says, My brother, show no partiality as you hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly, and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in, if you pay attention to the one who wears fine clothing and say, You sit here in a good place, while you say to the poor man, You stand over there or sit down at my feet, have you not then made distinctions among themselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs in the kingdom which he's promised to those who love him? But you've dishonored the poor man. Are not the rich ones, the ones who oppress you and the ones who drag you to court, are not they the ones who blaspheme the honorable name by which you were called? If you really fulfill the royal law according to scripture, which says you shall love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as a transgressor. Forever keeps the whole law but fails in one point, has been guilty of all of it. And there's some sins that maybe we don't think about often enough, and James gets right in our face and says that if we show partiality and we treat some people better than other, maybe it's because of the money and wealth they have, maybe because it's their appearance, maybe because it's some other attribute. We're living in sin. We're going against God's desire for us as his people to see everyone is created in God's image and created uh, with value and purpose before him. And maybe you don't think about some of the ways that we, uh, I think even with good intentions, find ourselves in this place of partiality. Maybe it's with your children and and, and their sports team or in class and you're wanting them to have more playtime on the team or uh, a better status on the class than other people you're showing partiality. Maybe it's at work, you want your buddy to get the favorable treatment by the boss, you wanna push something through, you're showing partiality. Maybe it's as you interact with the, the, the people around you in, in the, the more you know, disconnected areas. If you treat someone different because of their affiliation is something you like or dislike, then you would treat someone else. You're living in partiality and James says that's a sin because all men are created equal. All men are created by our wonderful, good, and perfect God, all in his image, all with the same value and worth before him. So what do we do with this? How do we not wander into this place of partiality like James warns us? And the first is just to remember that that we are all indeed created in the image of God, that we all have equal worth and stature before our creator, that It doesn't matter uh, what self-righteous things or what uh, you look like on the outside. It doesn't change the importance you have before the God of the universe. 
But I think also in a little different way, we need to remember to trust God, to trust God that he's going to sort things out. Because I think sometimes we show partiality because we feel like we have to be, as James says here, be the judge and arbiter of justice, of, of, of blessing and curses to the people around us. We think if we don't advocate for our kid, no one will. We think that, that we need to punish the people who are, are affiliated with this group over here because we don't like them, and so we're going to make sure that they suffer. And we put ourselves in the place of God, thinking that we have to bring justice and retribution to the world around us. And I wonder if we, when we find ourselves feeling like we have to strongly advocate positively or we need to, to show negative partiality and, and make people suffer, I wonder if we just need to step back and remember that the God of the universe is more powerful, more wise, more perfect in his timing, more inscrutable in his wisdom and judgment to the world around us than we could ever be. And maybe we need to remember that, yes, yeah, someone will fight for our kids, and it's our wonderful, loving, heavenly Father. And we need to remember that, that we don't need to necessarily stick it to the person that we think needs to suffer because if they have indeed done wrong, the God of the universe will make sure that that is dealt with. And so today, when you find yourself wanting to treat someone different, either for a positive or negative reason, let me remind you that James pretty directly calls that out. He calls it out as sin because all men are created equal. And we get to live in a country where those truths are declared to be self-evident because we have all indeed been created equal by our wonderful and perfect creator. So let's not try and upend the apple cart. For sure not uh, in God's design and his desires for our life, but not even in our country. But let's instead sit back and reflect on the truths of scripture they get to be echoed by some of our, uh, our nation's forefathers and treat everyone as created equal, all in God's image. Have a great 4th of July. We'll see you tomorrow.